Have you ever mixed up introducir en presentar? What about funcionar en trabajar? I know, with some Spanish verbs, it almost seems that we're playing a game. The team marine de do pingüe. Hmm, that's not very good, is it? In this video, I'm going to teach you 10 pairs of verbs that are easily confusing in Spanish. I'm also going to give you tips so you can remember these verbs and we're going to have a challenge through the video so you get to practice. Confusing verbs in Spanish is completely normal, but if you want to be more fluent, you have to get comfortable with them. So what are these famous pair of verbs? Let's start with an easy pair so we can warm up. Introducir versus presentar. Imagine that you're in this trivia and you're about to win millions of dollars. And the question is, what Spanish verb will you use to introduce someone? Eh, that's obvious. Introducir, right? No, you just lost. In Spanish, we use presentar when we're talking about someone, when we're talking about introducing a person to another. For example, te presento a mi mamá. On the other hand, introducir is used to talk about objects, objects that we're putting inside something else. For example, la enfermera introduce la aguja en mi brazo. The nurse inserts the needle in my arm. So help me fill these examples. Te, blank, a Juan. Will you use introducir or presentar? Presentar. Te presento a Juan. What about this one? Ella, blank, su contraseña, her password. Introducir. Ella introduce su contraseña. Let's go to pair number two. Asistir versus atender. I know, they look so innocent, right? They're not. In Spanish, asistir is a fancy cousin of ir. We're going to use it to express that a person goes from point A to point B or to say that it attends somewhere. For example, no asistí al concierto. I didn't go to the concert, I was sick. Atender, on the other hand, has many meanings. It's usually related to paying attention or to receiving customers or clients if we're talking about services. For instance, el mesero nos atendió muy bien. The waiter took great care of us. So help me with these examples. Number one, tienes que blank a clases. Will you use asistir or atender? Asistir. Tienes que asistir a clases. You have to go to school. What about el doctor a sus pacientes? El doctor atiende a sus pacientes. Let's go with the next pair. Trabajar versus funcionar. And trabajar is usually not the problem. Many people know that trabajar relates to profession or occupation. Yo trabajo mucho. I work a lot. The problem is knowing when to use funcionar. In Spanish, funcionar also means to work, but we use it to talk about things that work or don't work. And this can be process, systems, or anything, devices. For example, ah, mi celular no funciona. My phone doesn't work. So help me with these examples. Yo, aquí. I work here. Will you use trabajar or funcionar? Trabajar. Yo trabajo aquí. What about this one? Mi tele, no. My TV doesn't work. Will you use trabajar? Or funcionar. Funcionar. Mi tele no funciona. Let's go to see this funny pair. Saber en conocer. I know. I call them Mr. Know It All and Mr. Connections. Mr. Know It All, saber, is used to talk about facts, skills, and knowledge. 
as in yo sé hablar español. I know how to speak Spanish. Mr. Connections, a.k. conocer, is used to talk about the people and places you know. For example, ¿conoces a mi mamá? Have you met my mom? ¿Ok? Saber en conocer have some interesting nuances that can be confusing. I'm going to leave you a link in the description so you can check more about this pair. Let's go with the next pair. To rest in Spanish. And I know what you're thinking. To rest is going to be restar. Right? No. In Spanish, descansar means to rest when we're talking about resting. Descansar is what we do after a long day of work. Okay? Restar, on the other hand, is subtracting. It means subtracting. It's a fancy cousin of quitar, remove. And you can use it to talk about math, as in resta dos, I got three, or about concepts. For example, well, you're going to help me with these examples. No, blank, bien. I didn't rest well. Will you use descansar or restar? Descansar. No descansé bien. Okay, what about this one? No le importancia. Don't downplay it. No le restes importancia. No le quites importancia. Okay? The next one. Ir versus irse. In Spanish, ir is the verb that we use to say go. To say that a person is going from point A to point B. As in, voy a la tienda. I go to the store. Irse, on the other hand, is used to emphasize that a person is leaving a place. For instance, es tardísimo. Me voy a la escuela. It's late. I'm, I'm leaving to school. So help me with these examples. Tú, blank, a las nueve. Will you use irse, to leave, or ir, to go? Irse, tú te vas a las nueve. Bye. Ella, blank, a la tienda. From point A to point B. Ella va a la tienda. Let's go to the next one. Realizar versus darse cuenta. And a lot of people fall for this one, so pay attention. To realize. Realizar is a formal way to say hacer in Spanish. To do or to make. Hacen, yo realizo muchos proyectos. I do a lot of projects, right? Darse cuenta, funny enough, means to realize. To suddenly understand something. For example, ah, no me di cuenta. Ah, I didn't realize what happened. Okay? So help me with these examples. Nunca me de nada. Will you use darse cuenta or realizar as into hacer? Darse cuenta. Nunca me doy cuenta de nada. And as a tip, darse cuenta always comes with a pronoun, ¿ok? What about this one? El doctor una operación. The doctor did a surgery. El doctor realizó una operación. Let's go to the next one. Traer versus llevar. In Spanish, we use traer to express that we're moving, we're bringing something to the place where the speaker is. For example, Oh, did you go to the store? ¿Qué me trajiste? What did you bring me? Nothing. On the other hand, llevar expresses that we're moving something from the place where the speaker is. We're taking something somewhere else. For example, voy a llevar a los niños a la escuela. I'm going to take the kids to school. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Recordar versus acordarse. This one, you're not going to have issues with the meaning. The meaning is the same. 
we're going to use these two to talk about memories, things that we remember. The problem with this one is the elements that we're going to use. Heads up, we never say me recuerdo in Spanish, okay? We can say no la recuerdo. I don't remember her. That's awful, but I can remember her. I can also say no me acuerdo de ella. But notice that when we use acordarse, we need to use different elements. For example, you're going to use the preposition de to introduce the thing that you're remembering or not remembering, like in this example, no me acuerdo de ella. And you're also going to use reflexive pronouns, okay? Recordar is quite simple. It doesn't need all of those elements. Let's go to the final pair. And this list wouldn't be complete without them. Ser and estar. I know. When we use ser, we're talking about qualities that relate to a person's identity, who that person is. It can be your profession, your nationality, your name, your description, physical appearance. For example, yo soy mexicana. Estar, on the other hand, allows you to talk about location, but it also allows you to explain emotional states and conditions. For example, Ay, estoy cansada, I'm tired, right? So now that you kind of understand the difference between these two, help me fill these examples. Ella, una persona feliz. She is a happy person. This is who she is. Second, yo, feliz de estar aquí. I'm happy to be here. Will you use ser for the first one or star? Ser, right? Ella es una persona feliz. This is who she is. This is her identity. She's happy. What about the second one? Will you use ser or estar? Estar. Yo estoy feliz. This is a temporary feeling. I'm going to be sad when I leave you. Yo estoy feliz de estar aquí. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe now because I'm going to be recording a video explaining the difference between ser and estar and I'm going to give you my personal tip on how to know when to use each verb. So that's it for today. Now you know 10 different tricky verbs that most students confuse and your challenge is very simple. Start adding these verbs into your conversations. Before we finish this video, I want to remind you that I have a Spanish immersion channel where you can see these lessons in Spanish. That way you get to practice a little bit more. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please hit the like button. I hope to see you soon. Adios.